Welcome back to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to start a Patreon just so we could beat Diablo Immortal. Yeah, it's tough. But we appreciate all your generous support. Thank you for helping us beat this freemium game. We're also going to need a lot more of it. We need you guys to pony up because apparently it costs $100,000 to fully beat the game. It's kind of weird to think about. By beat in this case, we mean spend so much money and outweigh everyone in the game so hard that the game just kind of gives up. That sounds awesome. I'm like, if you didn't have to spend so much money, it sounds pretty fucking cool that you just beat everybody else automatically. Seems like a lonely existence, but it is. At least you'll never have that tug in the back of your mind wondering what if. But Lawrence is lonely at the top, you know? Diablo Immortal streamer who is at the top. JT is all business, has lived in this purgatory for almost a month now, uh, first posting about the issue on the Blizzard forums in early July before escalating to YouTube on July 13th, and then another video that got a lot more traction on July 30th. And the posts and videos, JT describes the issue. After pouring money into the game right at the start, he was able to get ahead of the leveling curve and just completely wreck every PvP opponent match after match. When I first started this game, I spent a ton of money right at the start, right? So I was way far ahead of everybody else. So I would go like 40 and 0, 50 and 0, it didn't matter, right? I would go 100 battlegrounds without losing a single one. JT then estimates his battleground win record is between 300 to 450 wins with only three with only three losses. And, and those were due to match disconnections or other like real world distractions. It's too bad the game just doesn't play for you as you beat other people. Um, after $100,000 spent and an impossibly overblown matchmaking rating, uh, the game just can't find a fair fight for JT. My matchmaking record is now so high that I literally can't get a battleground. Yeah, JT would describe being in queue for 48, 72 hours and just nothing. The queue would expire every two hours, then you try again. <sighs> From JT's perspective, after spending all that money and looking forward to battling it out with the Titans at the end of the at the end of the road, uh, I can get why it's a little more frustrating. Um, but it gets more complicated than, you know, one dude with a lot of disposable income said that he bought his way out of playing the game. As described by JT, Diablo Immortal required him to play a battleground match as part of a quest that would allow his clan to defend their immortal status. Since JT can't do a match, he can't complete the quest and thus opt his clan into the event. So all this means that Mega Whale JT is frozen out of playing, but we think his entire clan, uh, many of whom JT has spent thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on the game, his entire clan may be completely locked out of participating in this in-game event at all for the game's most elite players. We're not sure because it's been a few days since he's posted the video, but uh, it, it could mean that he's not playing and his clan can't do the in-game event. JT also voices frustration that after spending some hundred thousand dollars on the game and running a clan of similar big spenders, he can't get anything but the most basic customer service out of Blizzard. Let me tell you guys what they said to me. When I went to the live chat at first, the guy at the live chat was like, sir, you just don't know how to queue up for a battleground. You simply don't know how to queue up. Let me explain to you how to queue up. And I'm like, sir, I've queued up 350 times and I know exactly how to queue up. And then the person still didn't understand what I was saying. Man, that sucks. That's like, I can't believe they spent $100,000 on something you expect. It's like when you buy a nice car, you expect to get really good customer service, but. Well, concierge treatment, yeah, maybe. At least the free coffee, come on. Brief aside here, the amount spent, $100,000, is nearly exactly the figure estimated by Reddit user Damien three months ago on Reddit. Those projections turned out to be creepily accurate. Uh, though Damien himself insisted that the post, quote, wasn't meant to be an OMG, pay to win, no expose in any way whatsoever, and that they would also be spending a lot of money on the game, but Damien was correct. Yeah, but why spend money on Diablo Immortal when you can make money from other people spending money on Diablo Immortal? Bit of a weird connection, but this episode is sponsored by Seeking Alpha, the world's largest investing community. By partnering with them, we can offer you a premium subscription at over half off its usual price, giving you all the information, recommendations, and analysis you need to properly invest your money. More on that in a bit, though. Luckily for JT, Seems media coverage from a few outlets finally prompted Blizzard to respond, though they didn't mention JT's case specifically. Blizzard sent a statement to Kotaku on Tuesday morning saying they, quote, expect to roll out changes to the matchmaking system this week. Uh, JT himself posted an update video Tuesday morning as well, revealing that a Blizzard representative had finally contacted him with information of a pending fix. 
Great! Yay! Everyone's happy, except for everyone else that isn't JT. <laughs> That's true. Uh, the shot in front is very strong with this story. Not only did a player who outpaid everybody else find themselves in a, wh a whale purgatory, <laughs> but, Bli uh, but Blizzard couldn't even find the time to pick up their phones, which they clearly have, by the way. Hello! Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones. Phone, right? To actually cater to their big spenders. So for a game designed to squeeze whales out of their money, which this is doing, uh, preventing them from playing and ignoring their problems is the worst way to go about it. Unsurprisingly, there's a lack of sympathy in the comments for old JT, given that he's basically a perfect case study for why people don't like pay to win games to begin with. Uh, he dumped a ton of money into the game right off the, the bat and just completely smashed up to 450 multiplayer matches. That doesn't sound very fun for the 450 teams on the other side of that. It just got completely bopped by random factors outside of their control, but I guess if you play Immortal and you hit the Q button, you just shrug thinking that, yeah, some some whale might smash you and that's just how it is. And that's the way it goes. Uh, a lot of commenters see this as just desserts for JT, with Ghost Advance writing, quote, you thoroughly deserve everything you get, mate. And Xantardis writing, quote, all I can say is congratulations. You're the first player in history to complete a freemium game. Yeah, there's some good zings in there. Yeah, people taking their pot shots. Right by haters in the comments won't stop JT from continuing to play the game and spend money on it. Or anyone else, for that matter. On July 29th, the official Diablo Immortal Twitter account bragged about hitting the 30 million install milestone. The game also finally published in China on July 25th which likely propelled the game to that installation milestone. Yeah, absolutely. As reported by Sensor Tower, Diablo Immortal was the number one most downloaded app across all categories in the Apple App Store in China for the first two days of its release. Uh, it also vaulted all the way to number three in the top grossing charts on its launch day, climbing to number two a day later. Sensor Tower uses their predictive models to estimate a total of $100 million in revenue for the game so far. If that's true, it puts it alongside some of the industry's biggest earners, having hit that revenue in eight weeks, compared to Fire Emblem Heroes' 10 weeks, or Fortnite's 12 weeks to do the same. Uh, however, Pokemon Go got there in two. Woo! Oh, wow. It doesn't have the crown, but it's pretty close. Sad news for anybody hoping that Diablo Immortal would tank and prove that pay-to-win mechanics don't work. Uh, whoops. But this is online journalism, <laughs> in quotes. So we need to find something about this that's crowd-pleasing. Yeah, yeah, people people like to be told that what they think is right, so we gotta do that, Bruce, we gotta dig around. We gotta find some stuff. Uh, how about this? Try this one on for size. Even though Diablo Immortal is raking in millions of dollars, Activision itself is not doing so hot revenue-wise. Boom! Eat it, Bobby Kotick, we got you! How's that feel? Mm. <laughs> Feels good. Feels validated. Yeah, Tweaktown's Derek Strickland compiled the big takeaways from the quarterly report, leading with a 46% year-over-year drop in net revenue and a 65% year-over-year drop in operating income. Activision attributes the huge drop specifically to lower revenues from Call of Duty Vanguard and World of Warcraft. Amusingly, somewhat topical to Diablo Immortal, the only game to actually grow over this period was the mobile game Candy Crush, whose revenues increased by 50 million! and helped offset the losses. Uh, we've been saying this uh, on as many Inside Games episodes as I can think of. Mobile games are getting bigger and bigger, and I know everybody hates to hear it, but it's true. No mention of Diablo Immortal revenues in the quarterly statements just yet, though. We'll see those in a, in a few weeks. Uh, this financial quarter ended on June 30th, which included the first four weeks of Diablo Immortal on the market. Uh, Q3 should contain a full quarter of Diablo Immortal, not to mention two full months of the game operating in China. Uh, it'll be interesting just to see how much money Diablo squeezes out of its players in uh, all around the world, and now in addition, China. Yeah, and gamers will sigh, controllers will drop to the floor. The good news is that people are still making games for console and they're still making the big splashy single player stuff. It's still happening. They can live side by side, even though that's always gonna just earn um, ridiculous amounts of money. Activision actually really needs that money, Lawrence, um, real bad. The belts are getting tight because they cannot afford to design their own Call of Duty skins anymore even. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it's really bad. A uh, recent post on Raven Software's website promoting Warzone Season 4 content uh, revealed upcoming skins, including two Terminators and the floofiest of the good boys, a combat Samoyed. Is that how you say it? Samoyed? Samoyed. That's what, that's what Google says. Samoyed, okay, I think I got it, all right. Unfortunately, this exact design, cuteness and all, was posted two years ago by concept artist Sale Lin. 
who posted about the apparent plagiarism on Twitter, which was then picked up by Polygon on June 29th. Since then, Raven has removed the post and tweets with the image, but haven't made any statements about the issue. Oh, that, come, come on, Activision. Yeah, it's no good. And the ArtStation posts on the issue, Lynn writes, they are, quote, very disappointed to see my work being plagiarized by a big company like Activision in this way. I've reached out to Activision for an explanation and or compensation, and hopefully the issue will be settled soon. Uh, we hope for Lynn's sake that that is absolutely the case and they get something better than a thank you letter and a COD points gift card for 15 bucks. They probably should somewhere in the neighborhood of like, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars at least. At least, yeah. Just something to make sure that they're so effusively happy that any eyes looking at them walk away without any interesting story. I want a signed headshot of Bobby Kotick. That's gotta be worth like millions, right? What do you what does Activision have to steal from you to get one of those in the mail? So yes, if you're looking for you're looking for news to point and laugh at Activision because because they're the they're kind of the stinky kid in the room right now for, you know, some justifiable reasons. They got, you know, Activision's got egg on their face in a couple of regards here. One, ignoring a high paying whale in Diablo Immortal. Two, tanking revenue numbers. And three, uh, you know, whoopsie doopsie, where they accidentally plagiarized an entire Call of Duty skin. That's gotta, it's gonna feel good for you if you're rooting for bad times for the company. Accidentally plagiarized it, Lawrence? <laughs> I've wondered about that. What, what I think is that, like, my guess is if you're an artist and your entire world is cranking out designs, um, it's possible that you see something, you see a good design years ago, it lodges in your brain, you come back to design a character like that years later, and then your brain maybe remembers or has absorbed a lot of the good ideas that were in that art, or that art converged on those ideas because that artist went through the same process that you go through. Um, you know, Lynn pointed to a lot of elements that were, you know, pretty directly copied, a satchel pouch here, an arm pad here. Uh, the placement of those things follows good visual design and good design in general, so I'm not suggesting that two artists made nearly the identical thing separated. What's probably more likely is that an artist saw an inspiration two years later, forgot that that's where their inspiration was coming from, and ended up following a lot of the same pathways to get there. Uh, Lawrence, you, that's that's very positive of you and very optimistic, and I appreciate that. I hope that that's the way it works. <laughs> I really do. I mean, the alternative is that somebody Googled dog fighter, dog, <laughs> dog fight man, dog call of duty, and then yeah. like just copy and paste it. And if you're a, if you're a salaried employee at Activision Blizzard, even on an individual level, it's hard to imagine anyone thinks that that could fly. Like they didn't even they didn't even change the the colors or anything. Um, so it yeah maybe maybe somebody did that, but gosh, I'd like to know how they got through the interview process or what their portfolio looks like. Um, that's where the hangup is then. How did you let somebody that's that unskilled to just copy and paste a design get on your team? Now that we've officially done the games journalist thing, we told the audience what they want to hear, that Activision sucks. We can follow with a, a maybe more uncomfortable point. The next few quarters are going to be huge for Activision Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, this is unfortunately when we have to actually report the news, even if we don't agree with it or we know it won't make people happy. Uh, Seeking Alpha, who's actually sponsoring this episode, reports that uh, even though year-over-year -year numbers are way down, Q2 2022 actually represents quarter-over-quarter -quarter gains from Q1, as opposed to comparisons with Q Q2 2021, which was just a banner year for gaming in general. An accompanying statement from Activision CEO Bobby Kotick also mentioned that Activision's development headcount grew 25% year over year, which is notable given that a ton of other companies are in hiring freezes right now or laying, laying people off. Yeah, and by the way, I think that's great that they're hiring more people. That's, that's good. More jobs is better. It's also a dead quarter in general, not to mention that gaming companies are just across the entire industry are experiencing a retraction in revenue after two amazing years of pandemic-fueled growth. Uh, now that Diablo Immortal is out in China, and especially with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 launching in October, financials for Activision are likely to kind of turn around in the near future. They, they, they should. And if business financials or just the business side of the games industry in general interests you, we've got a really cool opportunity. We're partnering with the world's largest investing community, Seeking Alpha, to offer you one year of their premium plan for $140 off. Just $99 for a full year's premium subscription. Premium actually gives investors unlimited access to Seeking Alpha, enabling them to discover exceptional investing ideas and make informed decisions. Uh, Lawrence and I are both huge number nerds, and I am constantly on this website. The plan includes earnings calls, transcripts, stock ratings, data visualizations for earnings and dividend forecasts, 10 years worth of downloadable financial statements, and uh, just so many more tools. Yeah, as Bruce said, it's, a, it's an absolute dream for clown math enthusiasts like us. 
And we've sourced Seeking Alpha for years. I remember writing them into Inside Gaming scripts back in 2015 and earlier. So they've been a pretty trusted source for a long time. And if you follow the movements of the games industry too, you may be surprised at how much industry knowledge you already have if you want to get into investing. Uh, and Seeking Alpha offers all the tools you need to get started. One of the things that I personally really like about that website is that it, it does cover the games industry, but not from inside the games journalist bubble. It's really refreshing to hear coverage of the industry and perception of companies and their products from somebody who's not quite so enthusiast. It, it does give a really good and balanced representation, especially if you're thinking about getting financially invested in some of these companies. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Seeking Alpha Premium helps you delve deeper, make better investment decisions, and achieve your financial goals. Start your free trial today. Just hit the link in the description, it's right below us there, uh, to get your one-year premium subscription for $99 and almost 60% discount from the plan's usual price. So thank you very much for the sponsorship, Seeking Alpha. This was a no-brainer when they reached out to us because we've been using them for years. But Bruce, I've, I'm curious what you think about this situation in Diablo Immortal in general. Do you think that, do you think that some person paying a hundred thousand dollars into a game that then they they just get isolated? Do you think philosophically Diablo Immortal is a busted game? Because that seemed to be where most people were coming at it from. That it's all it does is play with your neurons and can and confuse you and make you think you're having a good time and then just suck money out of your wallet. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, so I, I do. I think that it's broken only because uh, Blizzard did not think about the whales. So if they had thought about the whales and come up with the end game for the whatever, 100 people that spent $100,000 in these games, there's not many of them. Um, if they had come up with an end game, especially for those people, then I, I couldn't fault Blizzard, honestly, or, or fault JT for that matter. If somebody wants to spend that much money, they're an adult. They could do what they want. Uh, and then they get to the end game and they get to do the really cool thing that Blizzard only has for the 100 people or whatever. Cool. However, Blizzard really fucked this up real bad because this dude spent so much money on their game and instead of rewarding him, they punished him. And that's the opposite of what you do with good customers. <laughs> so uh, to me, that seems like they really messed this up real bad. So not only is it a major blunder that everybody sees in the press for Blizzard, but then obviously everybody shits on JT too. So it's like all the way negative, all the way around. Yeah, I had to admit it is impressive. JT kept his composure really well. Didn't really engage with all the trolls. Was actually crazy patient, you know, uh, escalated things in a pretty progressive way, but never was too insistent or, or hateful or angry. Uh, and yeah, a month later, if, if there was something that I was stuck having paid $100,000 for and a whole month went by and the company I gave a hundred grand to didn't even reply to anything, I would not have been as patient as, as he was. So I'm kind of impressed with that. But on, on another on another level though, yeah, to, to kind of, now that, now that we're in the, the end game, I guess, and it's pretty established that Immortal is pretty widely downloaded and people are spending a lot of money on it. It's hard for me to, to get too upset about it because it just sort of reminds me of uh, like arcade games, you know? Okay. Those were, those were made from the ground up to entice you with pretty lights and sounds, give you a very kind of sugary, bombastic, and shallow experience, and then sort of trick you into putting in another quarter. It's they true. would kill you unfairly. They would tease like a boss that you didn't get to see. Um, there's the, you know, like bosses don't have health meters. They just blink faster and faster. So you always think you're about to kill it and then you die and you got to put in another quarter. So we're all familiar with these tricks. They've just been gone for a while. But, you know, the human race has existed alongside arcade games for a while, and I think it will probably find a way to exist alongside mobile games like this. I think the comparison there, though, is that people are spending $100,000 versus going to the arcade and spending ten. So that, I'm sure, is something that people have thought of. Is like, the scale there is off the charts. But you're totally right about the arcade analogy. It's just way more money. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about that. Man, if arcade games could have figured out how to, like, charge you money while you were playing... <laughs> It would have been, it would have been a different game for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. To me, there's a lot of people who come to games, and if they can't envision an ultimate win state, you know, a finish, a being better than everyone, then their mind goes to like, well, why should I play? I think focusing on completing a game or the game telling you that you beat it, that's an illusionary standpoint anyway. Um, and it, I think it reveals kind of a weird assumption about why anyone would play a video game because it can just be fun it can just be fun to play like you'll never beat chess but people still play it i mean you're right you're right lawrence that's why people spend uh hundreds of thousands of dollars on cars 
or that's why they like because cars are fun. That's for no other reason than they just get to drive it around and it looks great and it's fun. Or they buy a really nice house. They get to live in their house and they love their house and like you know yeah they could spend way less on a normal house but they didn't. Um, so you know at the risk of saying yes we're all adults you know we can spend as much money as we want on this stuff. Uh, I also agree with your other points about like how we're getting close to gambling where it, it probably it needs to be regula- regulated here because um, you wrote in the script and you're totally right that Diablo Immortals rated 17 plus uh, on Apple and Google and but obviously gambling here in the US is 21. There's a that's a, uh, a four year gap that could come into play. You maybe don't have those four years of experience. And you start throwing money away on Diablo Immortals. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like I spent $10,000 in this game and I got nothing for it. I only had fun. So you definitely there's a, there are issues there. It's all interesting to think about. I think the uh, the biggest hand wringing comes when you imagine seventeen year olds playing Diablo Mortal, and that their brains might be conditioned for reward loops that involve spending money. And since they have those experiences when they're younger, they might be more predisposed to overspend or chase those thrills when they get older and have more disposable income. And that's that's pretty theoretical. Uh, I guess I guess we'll see what happens if in uh, twenty years we have a generation of. Diablo Immortal burnouts who are throwing the credit cards at every everything they see. Totally valid point, though. Um, here are some patrons that always carry their Diablo Immortal teams, and they didn't spend ten thousand uh, dollars. Christian Morgan Anderson, Baron Five X, Chase T, and Gubinky. I've got some patrons that beat every freemium game they play without paying a dime. Cody Jost, Aaron Fraze, Ryan Daraberry, and Dreskel. Thank you all very much. 